The biggest and most prominent individuals today are talking about one thing, energy. And in this video, I'm going to break down everything that's happening and the trends we need to be aware of. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. In today's video, I want to talk about energy. We're going to look at electric vehicles and batteries and technology. And I think it's really important to understand this. You may not be in favor of this. You may have your own opinions about this. And you can see what government's doing about it. All that we need to understand is the trend because then we could see where the money will follow. If you want to be a better investor, if you want to make the right decisions for yourself and your family, you've got to be aware of the major macro trends. If you're you know, missing these little uh, obscure factors that you know come up, that's a different story. But when we understand these things, I'm telling you, it's going to make a lot of sense. I've got several different topics within this topic to cover here today. So stick with me until the end. I'm going to talk about this first. Proposed power grid upgrades driven by VA data centers could cost Marylanders $500 million. Oh yeah, you know that stuff that's... Uh, basically there to spy on you yeah uh so what's happening here is we need more and more and more data centers this is going to be the next bit it's already a big boom but it's going to be even bigger even bigger boom data centers need a few things they need energy there's no question about that and this is one perfect example they have to upgrade the grid because of the data center. Do you see that? That's a fact. We know that. I can always refer back to that. Let's go. Let's move on. Okay. Uh, I can't pronounce that, that city, but uh, Ludun looks ahead to small nuclear plants, industrial batteries. That is key. All right. Now, just understand here these are the small nuclear plants. There's the big boys, 10 years to complete. So, you know, think of like the Simpsons. That's what I always think of when you're thinking the big, um, the big nuclear plants. No, no, we can have small nuclear plants. They run much more efficiently. Apparently, they do not suffer from the same problems of the old style. This means that you could now have modular type reactors, put them in places you never could before, and power like create more power where it is needed where it is needed you don't have to you know be in the big city center in the case of ontario ontario has a lot of power okay because you're pulling from niagara falls hydropower massively and then you have a nuclear power plant east of toronto okay that nuclear plant did uh leak a whole bunch of radioactive isotopes into the drinking water uh for a lot of people but hey don't worry about it it was only a small amount so they didn't even try to clean it up but there's a lot of power going on there and now what we have is maybe putting putting them uh right where it's needed not where there's an abundance of energy right that's what's going on that would be fantastic but then we have this there's like the political side of it and there's like um you know what's what's happening on a wider scale europeans ditch net zero unaffordable climate commitments have two left uh leftist british parties racing to exit stage left what's going to happen in europe uh we'll see they're basically saying we can't meet this demand of net zero we can't do it we have to use these other energies or we're doomed we are doomed but you know no question whether it's net zero, whether it's this date or 2030s or 2050, all that stuff. They're going in that direction and they're going to spend more money on it. I think that they have to slow down their plans a lot and, you know, they'll have to give in on, on some way or shape or form. But what they're going to do, all these governments seem like they're doing it. It's happening in France, happening in Canada, U.S., they're basically saying we're going to go ahead with much more nuclear. That's what I've seen overwhelmingly. I've been talking about on this channel a while. Every time I do a video about this, it doesn't get the views that some of the others do, even though this is like a very obvious trend that I've been talking about since 2020. Get on that trend, at least be aware of what's going on, right? Major Australian pension fund to restrict coal investments. So as of July 1st, it's on the exclusion list. You see what I'm saying here? Coal is powering a lot. 
it's being used in places you know that it was and look at 2020 suddenly when everything was restricted coal was used more than ever before but this is happening Obama had said, we're going to, uh, you know, you want to have a coal company? Well, we're going to make you go bankrupt, basically. Look at where the money is going to and look where it's going away from. You could make money investing in coal, but long term, it's probably not a good thing, you know, if you're trying to do that in the United States or Canada or something. You, you see what's happening here? The Australian pension fund is is potentially taking money away from these businesses that provide work and so on but they're saying hey you got to start a solar panel company that's what they're, that's what's happening here do you see this this is all i'm connecting this all together lower battery prices are expected to eventually boost ev demand what's happening today is that you actually in most cases have to pay a premium for an electric vehicle and what they'll say is over a long period of time you get the gas savings you're going to be using the electricity it's cheaper and so on uh that's what they're saying so that is the you know the 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 person will say well you know if i invest now then i'll save money long term and whatever however if the cars were cheaper let's say the car you get a regular gas car and now you're actually getting like a six let's say it was half the price then you would say hmm you know i could save that money i'll just get this electric vehicle all i'm doing is going back and forth from work it's the same toyota corolla or whatever so you know what i'm gonna just stick with this electric car for now and i'll see how it goes that's what's gonna happen it's gonna take a while and a lot of people will then go into it but of course economies of scale and you know it's kind of give and take but we'll see what happens over the longer term okay electric cars are dying fast and the repair industry is lagging the demand for mechanics who can take apart a battery pack and repair the dead cell has vastly outstripped the supply so this is a this is a problem people don't like that they got it they don't have all the chargers that they need like there's so many things so this idea that we're like gonna be carbon neutral, net zero, everything's got to be sustainable uh, by, and they just make up a number, is it 2030, is it 2025, whatever, it's not going to happen, it's not going to happen, but they're going to restrict your output in the near future, you have to understand this, they are going to restrict, they're going to give you a carbon allowance, carbon allotment, the governments are doing this right now, they're preparing it, Belgium's ports are drowning under a glut of Chinese electric cars. Some are parked here for a year or sometimes more due to China's overcapacity in production as it aims to capture a quarter of the U European electric vehicle market. Uh, they're basically saying that there's just way too much. Look at it. Look at that. I mean, that's just one example. Um, this is uh, actually in China. But there's so many, so many out there, and I think I have this one as well. EU's unwinnable price war with Chinese EVs summed up. BYD, the company's cars, are 11-fold more profitable in Europe versus China. So in China, competition is super tight. But in Europe, they can make them way cheaper, sell them in there, and then um, even with tariffs, on top of that so even if they put a 20 percent tariff 30 percent tariff it's still more profitable for china to sell into europe so of course they're going to do that they're just expanding their capacity don't worry about it it'll sell hey will we sell it in a year from now yeah just make it let it sit out there whatever okay because these are not the cars that people care you know they want a beautiful car this is just i need to get back and forth from work that's all and so if they can you know, consider that to be what they want. Okay. And they're going to do that. They're going to get it cheaper. So what's happening here? I think it is very clear what's going on is that governments are trying to get rid of the coals of the world in respective countries. Okay. They're basically saying you can't invest in that. It doesn't matter how many jobs there's, there is there. It doesn't matter. The resources might be there. Tons of that resource in that country. No, we're not investing in it. We're going to make that a problem for you. On the other end, what are they saying? Nuclear, nuclear, nuclear. Uranium 
since 2020, when I started talking about this, has been performing extremely well. Of course, it has its ups and downs along the way. But why? Well, overwhelmingly, the governments are getting into this. And you know that you're going to need a lot more because if they want to power these technologies, they're going to need not just some more power. They're going to need way more power. A data center for AI is using, I forget the number, I believe I've showed the Finance Friday crew uh, about this recently, but they need, I think it's at least five times greater energy usage. So you've got an issue if you're trying to power that with the existing grid. You need to upgrade the grid. All of the technologies that are surrounding this one technology, like, okay, you could say uranium, that's one way to play it, but you could start to look at all of this, what is being used around it, the data centers. I talked about this uh, to the Finance Friday crew, gave um, you know more detail on that, but the point is you've got to start understanding where the world is going. You have your own circumstances with your family, yourself. That's different. I'm talking about where we're going uh, with the governments and what they're going to do regardless whether we like it or not, right? Okay. This right here is all about the, the live sessions that I do. Uh, we've got people coming in and they really are really getting a wealth of information. Uh, and I appreciate everyone. Shout outs to the Finance Friday crew. Shout outs to the Business Sunday crew. Success Sundays, should we call it that? Okay. Success Sundays, that's uh, the alternate name. Thank you, everybody, for being part of that. I just wanted to spend a second to talk about that. Really, really enjoy it. Um, whether, whether you come live or whether you're there uh, watching the recordings, thank you for that. Okay, guys? Um, I want to thank you for being here as well, but not just today. Tomorrow, too. Don't forget to come back tomorrow. Hit that thumbs up on the way out, and I'll see you then. Take care.